until 1944, Paris, the capital of France, had been controlled by the forces of Nazi Germany for more than four years, since the signing of an armistice on the 22nd of June, 1940. But all of that was about to change, with the Allied forces successfully breaking through the German containment in the hedgerow country beyond the Normandy beaches, a resistance movement within Paris was steadily growing. Unified under the banner of the French forces of the interior, they decided to fight back and reclaim their beloved city from the grasp of the Germans and the puppet fascist regime, Vichy France. My name is Liam Smith, and this is the moving story of the liberation of Paris. To prevent the French capital from falling into the hands of the Allies, Hitler appoints General Dietrich von Koltitz as the new commander of the city. He informs Koltitz that if he is unable to defend Paris from the Allies, then it must be destroyed completely. In other words, this is known as a scorched earth policy. If we can't keep Paris, no one can. To ensure that Koltitz keeps his word, a paranoid Hitler applies a frightening new law called Sippenhaf. Sippenhaf means a general's family would be held accountable if he should fail in his assigned task. Koltitz arrived in Paris on August 9, 1944, to defend the city from the Allies. On August 15, 1944, news of the Allied advance had reached the French capital. The French forces of the interior, led by Colonel Roll, couldn't hold back any longer, and decided to take action. Members of the resistance distributed propaganda leaflets and posters throughout the capital, calling upon Parisians to mobilize and take up arms. Emboldened postal and metro workers showed their support for the resistance by going on strike. The Paris police, who had collaborated with the Vichy and Nazi governments, decided to revolt and for the first time in four years, the French flag was hoisted from the Conciergerie. This was a sign for a call to arms. August the 19th, 1944, the first skirmishes occurred. Parisian resistance fighters emerged from their hiding places and attacked the German troops. They barricaded the streets to divert German vehicles into areas of a city where they could be captured or destroyed. In retaliation, General Koltitz ordered his men to suppress the resistance by any means necessary. The skirmishes on the street soon escalated and became increasingly violent. However, on August the 20th, Koltitz agreed to a ceasefire with the Parisian insurgents. This agreement was only temporary as sporadic fighting continued throughout the city. The truce provided the ample time needed for Colonel Roll to send a messenger to the Allies to require weapons, ammunition, and military support. But what the resistance didn't know was that the Allies were on a direct course to Berlin and had no intention to stop and liberate Paris. General Eisenhower wanted to chase the Germans and crush them as quickly as possible. Upon receiving this information, Charles de Gaulle was absolutely furious. He feared that if Paris was not liberated from German occupation, the results would be disastrous. When Eisenhower received the message from the French resistance and realized the dire situation, he had a change of heart and gave the green light for the free French to liberate the city with assistance from the Allies. Meanwhile, on August the 23rd, 1944, General Koltitz began his preparation to destroy the capital. Hitler gave the order to destroy the city by cable by saying, Paris must not pass into the enemy's hands except as a field of ruins. In response to this order, Koltitz laid out explosives at various bridges and monuments, but chose to ignore the order to destroy Paris 
despite the threat to his immediate family. The division he had placed to defend the city put up one hell of a fight, but they were unable to prevent the French from breaking through into Paris. Once inside the capital, the free French forces, along with the support of an Allied infantry division, overwhelmed the German resistance. On August the 25th, 1944, French General Philippe Leclerc entered Paris triumphantly, and the sound of the bell of Notre Dame rang out throughout the city for the first time in four years. Paris was officially liberated from the Germans. However, despite the surrender, pockets of German sniper fire continued in the streets. To achieve a ceasefire, captured German officers were dispatched across the city under white flags of truce to spread word of the surrender. The 9th Company of the Free French assaulted Colt its headquarters at the Hotel Maurice, where they found him waiting to surrender. In this section of colour footage, General Coltitz goes to sign the surrender documents in front of General Leclerc and Colonel Roll. Meanwhile, outside the building, Parisians openly vented their hatred towards the Germans. After the war, Coltitz wrote a memoir describing himself as the saviour of Paris. However, there is debate by historians whether he would have carried out these orders to destroy Paris if it had enhanced his chances to defend the city. Now that Paris was officially free from the Germans, Parisians welcomed their liberators and presented them with gifts and kisses, as shown in this beautiful colour film shot by Hollywood filmmaker George Stevens. Over a thousand resistance fighters were estimated to have been killed during the liberation of Paris, and another 1,500 were wounded. After Charles de Gaulle was welcomed home by the French, he delivered a powerful speech to the crowd from the Hotel de Ville. Paris, Paris outragé, Paris brisé, Paris martyrisé, mais Paris libéré. Par he congratulated the resistance leaders in freeing the capital and abolished the Communist Party with an invitation to enlist in the French army. For his efforts, Colonel Roll was presented a special order by de Gaulle, the Order of Liberation. This prestigious award was considered a very high honour and was only awarded to military units and communes for their deeds during the Second World War. After the liberation, the puppet Vichy government, including the La Malice, and those suspected of collaborating with the Germans, were put on trial for treason and shown no mercy. Marshal Philippe Batin was sentenced to life imprisonment. The uprising in Paris gave the newly established Free French Movement and de Gaulle enough prestige and authority to establish a provisional French Republic. Next time in my history videos, the Munich Agreement, 1938. Thank you so much as always for watching, I really enjoy making these history videos. And don't forget to give this a like and to subscribe for more content. Finally, a shout out to my subscribers for your ongoing support of the channel. Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Until then, stay tuned, I'll see you next time.